cruiser category, the Kawasaki Vulcan 1700 Voyager is loaded with all kinds of great features. Looking at it, you can see that the designers decided the classic styling cues would be the way to go. It has a muscular, beefcake look about it, but with solid modern engineering. At the heart, 103.7 cubic inch or 1700 cc, four stroke, liquid cooled, single overhead cam, four valve per cylinder, 52 degree V twin, moving things. Now that twin is matched with a six speed transmission, so you can select any gear for any situation. Digital fuel injection manages the go juice, Cowie tunes the FI for peak torque and horsepower in the high revs than the standard Vulcan 1700. The seat height is a low 28.7 inches for a more comfy riding position. It's got cool wheels, cool suspension, all that stuff. But what I like to see, electronic cruise control. That's fun on a motorcycle. This dashboard has a throwback look to it. In the middle of it all, the radio and its trick with an iPod adapter, satellite radio, weather band, and plenty of volume. It also has audio cues from a Garmin Zumo 600 or 665 series GPS, which can play through the headsets of the audio system. Color match lockable, top opening hard saddlebags for plenty of overnight storage. Color match trunk bag, big enough for two full faced helmets. Frame mounted bearing so it stays in place when you turn the bars. And this Voyager has something called CAMS or Kawasaki Air Management System to get some airflow to the rider and passenger at low speeds. And oh yeah, one more thing. It has a 5.3 gallon tank that helps to keep you on the road from pump to pump longer. Well, I've ridden it for a while. You now know the specs. How about my riding impressions? Well, let's start with the chassis. It's a cruiser, which means that it's pretty softly sprung. It's designed to go on long trips and take a lot of bumps. The interesting thing about this Voyager 1700 is that even when I'm leaned over in the corners, I can still feel all the little bumps from the front end of the motorcycle, which is something I really like. You, you don't get a numb feel, even though this is a, a rather large and heavy motorcycle. Now, the thing about this motorcycle is, is for a cruiser, especially a full dresser, it handles really well to the point where it's so confidence inspiring that you're gonna run out of ground clearance in a hurry. Now, let's go to that V-twin power. Fuel injected, like I mentioned, it's got a lot of grunt, a lot of torque, and it's fun. I mean, you twist the grip, and it's got a lot of torque. It's not extremely fast, and you only have about 6,000 RPM to play with, but really, I don't think I took it past 5,000 RPM. There's really no need, because this machine is all about that V-twin torque, and after a certain RPM, the torque kind of goes away, and so you feel the need to shift. Now. The transmission that comes along with it is interesting because it's a six speed. And in fifth and sixth, they're both overdrive gears. So for a lot of the riding that I did, which wasn't highway riding, but I was still going 55, 60 miles an hour, I actually didn't need six gear very much at all. I can imagine that when you're on the freeway, the super slab, and you're just cruising and you want a better gas mileage, that the second overdrive, which is six gear, is gonna really work for you. But on the twisty stuff, where I didn't go really much over 55 miles an hour, first through fourth and occasionally fifth were perfect. The ergonomics of it all, it's a cruiser, so it's a very upright riding position. The handlebars are swept back. And one of the things that's interesting when I ride a cruiser is I tend to slouch back quite a bit. It's like I'm really relaxed and enjoying the ride. But when I really want to straighten my back up, because after a few hours being slouched over kind of hurts the back, everything is right in the position I need it to be in. Your feet are slightly forward, which is comfortable. It's easy to get to the shifters. On a cruiser, you have both that front and rear shifter part. Really easy to get to the rear brake, which is important on a big motorcycle like this, because a lot of stopping power in the back, and you really want to even that braking out when you're coming to a quick stop. All the levers, and the buttons are in the right spot. Easy to see the instrument cluster as well. Now for me, only having a few hours on this motorcycle, it was kind of difficult getting used to the analog speedometer. Like I know, I can't even believe I'm saying that. I'm relying so much lately on digital speedometers and analog like together that with the little information center in the middle of the dashboard, it would have been nice to have mile an hour in there as well. Enjoyed the cruise control, that was fantastic. Just hit the cruise button and let the motorcycle do the rest. It has a couple great compartments. 
And of course it has a place that you can charge your phone or plug in your suit or whatever. The passenger part of the motorcycle I didn't get to try out, but the luggage part, we're talking over 30 gallons of storage space. I think for anyone, you can pretty much have a nice, comfortable, fun overnight trip. A full-blown cruiser like the Voyager 1700 with ABS, it's a lot of fun. The stereo's nice and loud, even with a full face helmet on. There's a lot of, lot of thumbs up on this motorcycle. A lot of fun, and uh, maybe someday I'll get to take it out for maybe a week and really test this bike and see how putting a couple thousand miles on it does. But get to your Kawasaki dealership and check out this top of the line Voyager 1700 with ABS. A lot of technology and a lot of fun built right in.